this is Pastor Todd and Ms. Daphne. We pastor Transformation Church here in Seminole, Texas. And I believe that this message is gonna be a blessing to you. Our vision is to transform lives and change the world. We wanna invite you to join us online or in person Sundays at 10.30 a.m. or Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We hope to see you there. Uh, another thing, Pastor, uh, Zach had mentioned that Pastor Todd and Ms. Stephanie are out. They're ministering in Florida this morning. And so uh, they, he, Pastor Todd is a senior pastor, if you don't know. Um, it, maybe this is your first time. My name is Pastor Chris, and uh, I'm the associate pastor. I, I'm over the media and a few other, other different things. And so I'm excited to share this word with you that the Lord put on my heart. And uh, it's going to be a great service this morning. I'm trying to watch my time, and I'm also going to take my time because normally whenever I get up here, I'm just 100 miles an hour like a shotgun going every which way. So I'm going to try to slow down and, and get across the point that the Lord wants me to get across. Amen? So um, one thing that I know that I, I'm supposed to do, um, there's been a lot of uh, sickness going around our community, kids, people, whatever. How many of you have noticed that? Anybody else noticed that? Well, guess what? It doesn't have to go through you. It doesn't have to get on you. It can go right around you. Amen? So right now, I just want to pray. If, if you have any sy symptoms or if you know of anybody that has symptoms of like maybe a throat congestion, whatever it is, I'm just going to pray right now. Link your faith with me this morning, and we're going to believe for healing. Amen? All right. Dear Holy Father, thank you so much for sending your son, not only for our salvation, but Lord, for our healing. Lord, thank you that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, we are healed. We are the healed of the Lord. And so Lord, I just pray right now for healing, your healing power to be made evident in our bodies, in our lives, and also those who may be watching online at home. Lord, I just thank you so much that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives on the inside of us to quicken our mortal bodies. And Lord, I thank you that right now we just call it done. We praise you for your healing power in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. All right. So this morning, we've been in a series uh, called Identity, right? Maybe. He'll put it up in just a second. We've been in a series called Identity, and Pastor Todd has been talking about freedom. He's been talking about purpose. This is the year of purpose, and uh, he's talk been talking about serving. And this morning, I'm going to be talking about your identity is, one, being a child of God, but Romans 8, 14 says that for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. They are the children of God. So being led by the Holy Spirit is a part of your identity as a child of God. Amen? Amen? And so we're going to talk about the leading of the Holy Spirit. How many of you were here last week, last Sunday? Man, what a Holy Ghost service. Woo! Glory to God. It was so much fun, wasn't it? Well, uh, that does not, we do not, right here we have a service outline that just has a few songs and just general things. That was not on the outline. Okay, so that was by the, the Spirit's leading. And we always, at any time in any of our services, are always ready and sensitive to whatever the Holy Spirit wants to do. Because this is not man's church, this is God's church. So whatever God wants to do, we say, we're just going to get out the way and say, Lord, you do it. Amen. And so this morning, what we're going to talk about, it's been on my heart for months. I Literally, I wrote this, uh, this sermon back probably in May, end of May, maybe early June. And uh, because it, there was just so much on my heart about it, I just started writing some stuff down. And uh, so I'm, I'm excited to share that with you this morning. Okay? Just turn over to John chapter 14 and verse 16. We're going to start in verse 16 and 17. I have a ton of scriptures this morning, just like always. This church believes in the word of God. We do not believe in man's opinion. So I'm not, I'm not going to get up here and talk to you about my opinion. Okay? Awesome. So John chapter 14 and verse 16. If you haven't, uh, I love the book of John, the, the gospel of John. Um, this basically the second, third or half of this is Jesus just talking directly to his disciples. And chapter 14, 15 and 16 and even 17 are some of my favorite in the gospels because of just the, uh, the intimacy that Jesus is talking about and the, the subjects that he's talking about. I love the Holy Spirit. How many of you love the Holy Spirit? Now, let me just back up a little bit. I said, I I should have said this a little sooner. Um, if, if the Holy Spirit and the things of the Holy Spirit make you a little nervous, I'm not going to make you do nothing, and he's not going to make you do nothing, okay? He's a gentleman, and what we're talking about today, just be at ease. We're not going to make you do nothing. Just the Holy Spirit is not a, a weird, goofy uh, thing that just flows through and gives you the goosebumps or makes you cry. Hello? He's a, he's a, part, he's a third of the Trinity, the Godhead. Amen. And so we need to know about the Holy Spirit. It's important. If Jesus put a bunch of importance on it, he actually said, it's better that I go away so that I can send, so I can ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to you. Amen. If you think, if Jesus said that, it's better that I'm not here, don't you think that 
it's important that we know what he was talking about, the Holy Spirit. So that's what we're going to talk about this morning is uh, being led by the Holy Spirit. Are you ready this morning? All right. Did I give you plenty of time? John chapter 14, verse 16. You ready? We're going to read 16 and 17. I'm, re- I'm, re- I'm going to read this out of the New Living. It says, if you love me, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and uh, he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. Hallelujah. He will, what, never leave you. Guess what? He's, he's with you for the long haul. When you get saved, guess what? The Holy Spirit comes and makes his home inside of you, and he will never leave you. That means even when you wake up in the morning, your, your breath stanky, your hair all in a mess, no makeup on, come on, drool stain on your cheek, the Holy Spirit's still there. Uh, it's your worst moment. The Holy Spirit is still there. And guess what? When you're feeling all right, you're feeling good, life is good, come on, you just got a bonus at work, you, you know, your kids are acting right, guess what? The Holy Spirit is still with you. Even on your best days and your worst days, he's not going nowhere. Thank God. Come on, thank God. Come on, we don't need to just be aware of the Holy Spirit on our worst times or on our best times. At all times, we need to be aware of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Because uh, Jesus paid an ultimate price, not just for salvation so you can spend eternity with God the Father, but so that he could place the Holy Spirit, his spirit on the inside of you. Amen? Amen? And so this word uh, in uh, other translations uh, at the end of uh, verse 17, it says, he lives or dwells with you now and later will be in you. So that word dwells, I I had to look that up. And what it means is to permanently, permanently abide or live, take up residency or dwell in a home. It carries the idea of residing permanently. It means that he's not going nowhere. He's going to dwell in that house. Right now, I pay for my mortgage. I pay at my house, and that's where I dwell. Come on, you're not dwelling in my house. You're invited to my house if you need a place to stay, but you're not dwelling in my house, okay? <laughs> okay, that was, okay. Y'all got weird about that. So they're like, I don't want to be at your house anyways. I'm like, fine. All right, so James chapter 4, verse 5 says, Or do you suppose it is uh, to no purpose that the Scripture says he yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to what? Dwell in us. Dwell in us. So this means that it's the opposite of somebody coming on a trip uh, for a short period of time. It, he doesn't just uh, visit you on Sundays. Come on, he's not just here right now just because we're all here. That means whenever you get into your car and you're going to just abide or to wherever you're going to go eat or at your house, whatever, he's still with you. Like I said, when you wake up tomorrow morning, still with you. He's not going anywhere. Thank God. That should bring some peace of mind to you, that God's not going anywhere. Some people, they've lived a life of abandonment. People have left, uh, relationships have ended, whatever. The Holy Spirit will never end his relationship with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He's not going anywhere. Amen? That, That should be good news to somebody in here. So he's with you for the long haul, and he's not looking for a way out. Oh, man, he is not looking for a way out of this relationship. Amen? And so uh, one thing that the Lord told me as I was praying months ago about this, he said, you are now a temple, not a timeshare. I was like, whoa, that really spoke to me. Because uh, at times I felt like the Holy Spirit would come in and make me feel good. He'd answer a prayer maybe or lead me or say something to me. And I'm like, oh, yeah, he's there. And then other times I'm like, God, you have forsaken me. Where are you? Like, I, I don't even know where I am. Like, does that make sense? Has anybody else been there? You are now a temple and not a timeshare. <laughs> Amen. You're not a hotel room. You're not an Airbnb. Just somebody, that, just a place that comes in. They stay for a little bit, and then they dip out, leaving the place a wreck. Come on, he comes in and makes you new. Come on. I said the Holy Spirit comes in and makes you brand new. That's good news. He, he's like a good guest. You know, me and Gabby, we went on a vacation recently uh, with Gabby's side of the family to, I don't remember where we went. Uh, it was a small ranch place thing. And anyways, uh, her dad is a very clean person, loves to leave the place better than he found it. And uh, I read on a review, uh, I, got, I was on the email list or whatever, and the uh, owner said, I would invite John back anytime because he left it better than he, than he found it. It was cleaner whenever we were there, whenever they came back. 
Come on. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is like John Grunewald. <laughs> he, leaves it, he leaves you better than he found you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He doesn't leave crumbs on the table. He doesn't leave dirt in the, in the, uh, under the sink or whatever, like by the back door. Come on, he cleans things up around you. He cleans up your life. But you have to let him live in your home. You have to let him live there. Come on, you're not just trying to put him in a closet back in the guest room, back in, you know, in the coat closet, like, okay, just stay there when I need you. I'll open the door, I'll put you on, and then we can, we can have a good time. Come on, he's not a raincoat. <laughs> Amen. Come on, he lives with you. He abides with you. He's dwelling in you. That's good news. Did I explain that good enough for you this morning? First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 says, uh, I'll read verse 22. It says, or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, what? Within you. He, where is he? Within you, amen, whom you have for God, from God. You are not your own, for you were bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. You see, God formed you and sent Jesus as a sacrifice so that, he, so that you could house the Holy Spirit on the inside of you now. Hello? In the Old Testament, uh, the, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord would come upon somebody. That's why Jesus said in John 14, because he hadn't ascended yet. He had not, gone, he had not uh, been crucified on the cross he had not been resurrected. There was no uh, Holy Spirit within yet. But Jesus, it, the word says that Jesus had the fullness of the Spirit. And so what Jesus was saying was that uh, he, he is with you now because Jesus was with them. He was the fullness of the Spirit. But later he will be in you. When is the later? Now. Now. We're in the later. He is with us now. He's within us now. So I want to say this very clearly. The Holy Spirit is where? Within you. Just, just turn inward and say, hey, Holy Spirit. What's up? <laughs> Come on, he, he is always there. Amen? Like I said, in your best days, on your worst days, he's always there. Amen? Brother Hagin said it this way. Many Christians miss the supernatural in search of the spectacular. Many Christians miss the supernatural in search of the spectacular. Meaning they want a sign from the Lord. Come on, they're looking for something, something external. When in reality, God has done something supernatural. Come on, he raised Jesus from the dead. <laughs> Made you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Come on, that's good news. He has placed the Holy Spirit on the inside. Amen. On the inside. Amen. It's a supernatural thing to be led by God. Amen. So Romans chapter 8, verse 14 says, uh, I'm going to read this in the New Living. It says, for all who are led by the Spirit of God, they are children of God. How many of, our, of you are child, children of God? You're a child of God, son or daughter of God. Come on, you can be a little more excited about that. I am a child of the Most High King. Amen. I have a new identity. I'm not just a delay. I'm, I'm a child of God. Amen. Glory to God. I, I have God's attributes now. And so what this is saying here is that when you are led by God, you are acting out of your God-given identity. Again, we're talking about identity. Hello. So whenever you are led by God, you are acting out of your identity. Whenever you are asking God for a sign here, a sign there, a miraculous thing here, or like some sort of super uh, uh, weird way to, for God to talk to you, you are now not acting out of your own new identity. Does that make sense? So that means that whenever uh, people go to a psychic, uh-oh, look at a horoscope, come on, you're acting like the world. Come on, y'all act like I just slapped you across the face. Come on, this, <laughs> like, y'all can still smile at me. This is still good news. I, just look straight ahead and smile. No one is going to know that you checked the horoscope on the paper this morning. No one will know it's you. It's fine. All right? So God doesn't lead unbelievers except to Jesus. He, that is the, it, whether you know it or not, you've already been led by God if you are saved. Because the Holy Spirit, the first thing that he's going to lead you to, the first place, is to the loving emb embrace of Jesus Christ. Amen. He reveals Jesus to the world. That is the first time you were ever led by God. Whew, glory. Some of y'all are like, I've never been led by God. I've never heard his voice. Yes, you have. You were, you, were let, you were convicted by the Holy Spirit about your sin, about your life, and it, it caused you to turn to, to Jesus. 
<laughs> Isn't that good news? Come on, you're more spiritual than you think. <laughs> you're more spiritual than you think. Jeremiah chapter uh, 29, 11. Uh, well, let me back. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and read it. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Amen. You see, uh, th- I wrote this down that the one who has a plan for your life also has a way to communicate that plan for your life. He has a way to communicate the very plan for your life. How many of you know that God has an ultimate plan for you? Individual for you. Specific for you. He has a general plan in his word for all believers, for, every, for everyone. But at the same time, he knows you individually. The, the next uh, scripture that I have here is that... Um, the Psalm 37, verse 23, it says, the Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they will never fall, never fall for the Lord holds them by the hand. Somebody say, he delights in every detail of my life. Amen. And so uh, I, was, uh, I remember a story uh, whenever just talking about being led. How many of you know you can be led to your spouse? Even if you were at the club. <laughs> if that's where y'all met. No, hey, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Blessed. <laughs> so I went to Bible school. I, I, that was another story about being led by God. But I went to Bible school my third year. I, I was led again. And I don't, I'm not trying to make this sound super spiritual. But this is, this, the spiritual things, the supernatural things should be natural in a believer's life. So when you say things like this, it should not be like, oh, yeah, okay, he's just talking about the spirit again. No, it's a, it, it should be so supernatural to the world, but super actually natural to you because you're so in tune with, with who's living on the inside of you. Amen. And so I went to, to Rhema Bible Training College, and um, my third year, or into my, going into my third year, I met Gabby Grunwald. I saw her. We were serving at... Uh, junior varsity, which is their junior high department. And uh, we started talking, we started dating. And uh, I remember calling my dad, this was a few months after we had been talking and kind of dating. And I I called my dad and he was, and he was like, so, you know, what's going on? What's new? And uh, I was like, you know, I actually met this girl. And I told him all about her and everything. And and he was like, oh, so you're all dating? And I was like, uh, yeah, no, like, I don't know. Like, it's not super official. I'm, I just haven't like gotten the yes yet kind of thing. And he said, well, what are you hesitating about? And I had never thought about that. <laughs> uh, everything seemed right, but I was just, I was just dragging my feet. And uh, whenever he asked me that, I, just on the inside of me, it just bore witness that I, I feel led to Gabby. She is my future wife right then. And so right then I made a change and I was all in. And a uh, similar story for Gabby, uh, she, uh, she probably tells this story better, but uh, similar thing. She was, she was just head over heels for me for a long time. <laughs> A long time. No, literally, seriously, let me tell you a story. I, I'm throwing her under the bus right now, but I'm holding the mic, so it's okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I was playing basketball for Rama, and my first year, um, she had just recently gotten out of a relationship. I had never seen her before, never met her, nothing. This was whenever Snapchat was really cool, like in its heyday, okay? So she put on her Snapchat story, when you would totally date number 24, me. That's me. So she came to one of our games with a friend, and literally, this was two years before we met, before I met her. She knew all about me, like I said. No. <laughs> she, she, she's rolling her eyes back there. <laughs> no, but uh, she, somebody asked her a similar question and, uh, she, about, you know, is he the one? I think her dad may have asked her that. And, and is, is he the one? And she said, I don't have a no, and that scares me. Meaning, like, to every other boyfriend, it's been a no on the inside. And she said, it, it's not a no, so that kind of scares me. Meaning, like, the yes makes, made her nervous that I was the one. Even though she had been stalking me for two years. She, like, as if that was brand new news to her. <laughs> I'm having fun this morning. This is great. <laughs> I'm not getting through my notes. I'm just going to tell you all right now. I'm not getting through this. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. How many know, God, if God has a plan for you, he has a way to communicate that plan to you. Amen. Amen. So Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, this is a very popular verse. We're going to read 5 and 6. It says this, 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In, your, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Now, this is, I love this verse. This is something that you could, many of you could probably just quote, just bam, uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart, blah, blah, blah. Okay? But as I was praying about this, uh, I, I, I'm a, I'm a list kind of guy. I like to divide things up and, and categorize different things. And so as I was praying about this a, a while back, the Lord showed me this, that there are four parts to these two verses. You ready? First part, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Second part, do not lean on your own understanding. Third part, in all your ways, acknowledge him. Fourth part, he will make straight your paths. So you see, I'm not saying that God is an ultimate equation type of God, but there are patterns in in his word and in his will. So this means what this shows me is that there are three parts you and one part God. Trust in the Lord. Don't lean on your own understanding. Acknowledge him. Then what will happen? He will make straight your paths. I just blew some of y'all's minds. I can tell right now. He will make straight your paths. It's not just going to be make straight my path while I'm living crazy, while I'm living with unforgiveness. Come on. As a, whenever I'm living in pride and I want to do it my way, I see the way that it needs to happen, and that's the way it's going to happen. He's not going to make straight your paths in that way. Come on. Being led by the Spirit of God is a humble thing. It's a humble thing to be led by God. It means that I am not about myself anymore. I'm about God's will. I'm doing God's will. Amen? Psalm 16, 11 says, You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Amen? And so uh, turn over to Romans chapter, four, uh, chapter 8. Excuse me. Romans chapter 8. I want to turn there too. Romans chapter 8. We're going to start in verse uh, 14. Romans chapter 8. If you uh, didn't know, Romans chapter 8, in my opinion, is one of the best chapters in the whole Bible. You should just read Romans 8 for a month straight, every day. Just read that one chapter, and I promise you, you will get, your mind will be blown every single day. It's amazing, okay? Romans chapter 8, verse 14. You ready? We're going to read through verse 17. It says this, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say I'm a child of God. Amen. Somebody say I'm, I'm led by God. Amen. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Verse 16. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. So this word, uh, these two words, bear witness, what does that mean? That means to corroborate the evidence or to agree with the evidence. So that means that the Holy Spirit on the inside of you is agreeing with the evidence that's already on the inside of you. Come on. He's agreeing with the Word of God, saying, I am a child of God. That means the Holy Spirit is bearing witness. You know, you may have heard that in Christianese type of language, you may have heard that it bore witness with me. Has anyone ever heard that? It bore witness with me. All that means is that uh, it felt right on the inside. You can read through the book of Acts, and many times that's, that's exactly what happened. It seemed right. That's a better way to say it. That's how I would say it. It just seemed right. Have you ever made a decision and it didn't seem right? Many times. Many times over here. Okay? I'm, I'm going to be honest in church, even if you're not. Okay? <laughs> many times I've missed it. But also many times, I've also, it's bore witness with me. It's made sense on the inside of me. Amen. And that's the decision I go with, and it ends up uh, being great. Amen. And so uh, what this means is that there is already evidence on the inside of you that the Holy Spirit will confirm. The Holy Spirit confirms things that God is saying on the inside of you. Amen. He confirms things. So when you are led, there will be uh, confirmations by God. So... uh, I'll tell the story. You may have heard it before. Pastor Todd went to, uh, he was planning a trip to go to either India or Nepal. I can't remember which place he was going to for a a conference and pastor's conferences and and a great uh, uh, crusade. And so he was going, he ended up, uh, he was flying out of Lubbock uh, later in the evening, I think. And so uh, he went to the airport and he was all packed up. He paid for the trip, paid for the flights, everything. And he got to the airport and uh, his flight was delayed. 
And then it was delayed again. And like three times it got delayed to the point where it actually got canceled. The, the pilots like timed out, I think, or something like that. And so thankfully, uh, my grandparents, his parents, live in Lubbock. And so he called them up. He's like, hey, my flight got canceled. Can I come stay with you? Can I go, you know, sleep on your couch, whatever? And so they're like, absolutely, come over. And so, excuse me. So he went over there, stayed there. He said that was like one of the worst nights of sleep he had ever gotten. Because he was just like, what is going on? He was just praying like, I can't get peace about anything right now. Like, he was just praying for the trip and everything. He was like, I don't know what to do. And so uh, he, the flight that he got bumped to was early the next morning. He was leaving at like 6, so he needed to be up at like 3.34, whatever. And he's just an early riser anyway, so he was probably two hours early just, just because. Like, he was just sitting there twiddling his thumbs in the airport probably. Anyways, okay, anyways. So as he's waking up, as he's packing his bag back up, his dad comes out of his room and goes and knocks on the door and says, son, I've been, wa- I've been awake all night praying for you. I've been waiting for you to wake up. I, th- I don't think you're supposed to go. Or actually, he said, the Holy Spirit told me you're not supposed to go. And Pastor Todd said, that's it. That's what I've been missing. He said, that was confirmation on the inside of him. I'm not supposed to go. That whole time, the Holy Spirit was trying to get a hold of him, like, hey, you're not supposed to go. You're not supposed to go. And then it took his dad to come in and say, you're not supposed to go. Thank God for Holy Spirit-led parents. <laughs> Even at 40 years older, however old Pastor Todd was at the time, like, your parent, let me, I'll go this way. Parents, <laughs> it's important for you to be led by the Spirit of God for your children. It is vital, vital that you are led by God that you are led by God in how you parent your kids. How many know, man, the world is crazy. The stuff that, that is going around, is circulating around, is in front of these kids' TV screens or iPads or whatever, like, it is crazy. It really is. But you need to, you have the spirit of God. You have the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead living in you so that you can be led as to make decisions for your kids while they're in their household. You can train up a child in the way they should go, and when they're old, they will not depart from it. It is vital that you are led by God. Vital. And when you miss it, guess what? There's grace to cover it. There's grace to cover it. Amen. And uh, I'm, just, I'm just thinking of, there's many instances that my parents, thankfully, put me in the presence of God because they know, they knew that I needed to learn the voice of the Holy Spirit for myself. They don't, they don't say, hey, the Holy Spirit told me for you to speak on this message today. <laughs> they didn't say that. I was led by God in this. And just as your kids, they need to develop the voice of, hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit for themselves. Is that new revelation to anybody? <laughs> they all acting like, okay, praise the Lord. We're going to move on. It's vital that you, you as parents are led by the Spirit of God. I'll, let me use this example. Me and Gabby, like I said, we were talking for a long time. I was working whenever we were dating. I was working a long shift. So, like, I, we went to school in the morning, 8 to noon, and then I went to work at 2 to 10. And so we either had lunch together, and, and depending on her schedule, she, did, she couldn't have lunch. But most of the time, we would see each other at night or on the weekends. Uh, and, and even then, like, I was helping with the church, and I was gone most of the weekend anyways. Anyways, uh, so we were texting a lot. That's how we communicated. We were texting, Snapchat, whatever. Like, that's how we were talking, getting to know each other. And I can tell you, to this day, we still text all the time. We still talk all the time. If if Gabby texted me something, I would know that it's Gabby, even if, uh, like, even if I didn't have the contact information. Because I know how Gabby communicates. I know how she says things. I know know what emojis she uses. (laughs) Right? I know what gifts she uses or, you know, like the little picture, video things. I just sounded so old right there, y'all. Pray for me. Pray for me. All right, so it's important that you know the voice of the Holy Spirit for yourself, but how do you know the voice of the Holy Spirit if you're not in your word? God is not going to, he, he's done this before, but he, it, it is less likely now than ever because you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you it's for him to send an angel to talk to you. Because you have the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so it's important that you get into the Word of God. The Word of God is where you will find God's will for your life. Come on. You'll find out what He likes, what He doesn't like. You're going to find out uh, what makes Him happy, what makes Him unhappy. You're going to find out how He would say something, how He would not say something. 
Amen. So that whenever you do hear the, because Jesus said that the Holy Spirit will not speak on his own authority, but anything that he hears the, the Father say. Hello? He, he's the messenger straight from the throne of God Amen. to you. That means that the business decisions that you need to make, God knows, and he can get it to you through the Holy Spirit. The decisions that, that you need to make for your children, God knows, and he can get it to you through the Holy Spirit. But first, you got to get into the Word of God for yourself. Not me to you. Not Pastor Todd to you. Not that podcast to you. Come on, not the daily Bible verse on the U version to you. Come on, it's got to be more than that. <laughs> All right, I just saw some ugly looks, so we're just going to move on. No, I'm kidding. No one looked at me ugly. I'm joking. So where does the Spirit lead you? John chapter 16, verse 13 says this. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. So where does this Holy Spirit lead you? Into truth. The answer is into truth. I just, I just gave you the answer to the pop quiz, okay? Into truth. So God wants to lead you into truth, and God cannot lie. He is not the author of lie, so he will not give you the Holy Spirit. He will not say something to the Holy Spirit to tell you that is a lie. So again, you have to know what is truth and what is a lie in order to know what is from God and what is not from God. God will not lead you to slap your wife, to, to, uh, to throw something at your husband, to, to yell at your kids in an angry way. Come on, he's not going to lead you that way because you know, whenever you know the character of God, that's not how he treats you. Come on, I know that was super extreme. <laughs> like, but God's not going to lead you that way. He's going to lead you on the lines of faith and love every time. Believing the best, loving the best. Amen. And so this, this word truth, what does that word truth mean? It means real rea reality, not fabricated or exaggerated. Real reality. And guess what? He's going to lead you not just into a little bit of truth, but into all truth. Hallelujah. He's going to lead you into all truth. You see, God doesn't want to keep any truth from you, but it's up to you to follow the Spirit's leading and guiding. So if you're wondering, well, why hasn't he told me what my purpose is? Why hasn't he given me an answer on that question that, I, that I've been asking him? Well, it, it may be that he's led you somewhere else, but you're, not, you're too hard-nosed to, to understand where he's leading you. Amen. Come on, sometimes God doesn't trust you with a five-year plan because he can't trust you with a five-minute plan. Amen? Like, there's some things that it's just like, he's like, I would love to tell you what you're going to be doing in five years. I want to tell you, but I can't because you're going to mess it up. <laughs> he's like, if I told you what was going to happen in five minutes, you may still mess that up. <laughs> I'm talking about me. I'm not talking about any of y'all. I'm talking about me. This is, that's been true in my life. But can he trust you with the five-year plan or the five-minute plan? Amen. How obedient are you to his leading? Amen. How many of you have ever met somebody who are directionally challenged? Anybody? Where it's like, if you tell them, hey, go over to United and get me some strawberries or something, they're like, United? What? Where is that? They're like, where, where is United? How, do I, how would I even get Where if they told them, oh, hey, where are you at? Like, let me, like, I'm going to meet you over here. They're like, can you just come pick me up? Because like, I just, or, or they're just going somewhere. They, they got to, hey, Siri. Like, <laughs> hey, Siri, how do you get over there? You know, or send me, send me the address, that kind of thing. There's some, there's some people, and I'm not hating on anybody because I use Google Maps a lot, especially when I don't know where I'm going. So it, it, that way I don't have to ask Gabby, hey, where are we going? But anyways, so there's Christians that are the same way. They're just directionally challenged. And what the Holy Spirit told me, or what he showed me as I was praying this out, he said that there's some Christians that are directionally challenged, not because they don't know where they're going, it's because they don't know where they're at. It would be nearly impossible for you, for you to be blindfolded, taken somewhere random, and then, and then lift the blindfold and say, okay, now get to United. Like, that would be so hard for many of us. Some people are like, whatever, I know North, East, Southwest, like, I can get there. Okay, whatever. So... That's not me. I don't know, I don't know those things. Anyway, so, but the Lord told me that, that most, most Christians don't know where they're at, so how could they know where they're going? You have to know where you're at in order for God to lead you to where you're going. Come on, you have to know your identity so that you can know where God is leading you as a, as a believer, as a parent, as a child of God, as an employee. Amen. 
So if you remember Adam and Eve, whenever they sinned, God, uh, they heard God in the garden walking in the cool of the day, and they hid from him. And he, and he said, after he found him, he said, where are you? Where were you? Or he was calling out to them, where are you? Where are you? But in the contrast, Isaiah said uh, in, in his book, he, the Lord said, who will I send? And Isaiah said, here I am. I know where I'm at. Send me from here. Send me from here. Come on, we have to go from an Adam and Eve type of mentality into an Isaiah tr- type of uh, mentality to know, I, I'm not trying to hide from God. I, I know exactly where I'm at so that he can send me to wherever he needs me to go, to lead me to wherever he needs to go. And guess where that place is? All truth. He will lead you into all truth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right, I'm going to make this quick, and we're going to end right here. I'm going to give you two points. You ready? What ways can we be led by God? Two points. You ready? By his word and by his spirit. By his word and by his spirit. So the first one, by his word, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this, but the number one question that you need to ask yourself whenever a question on on theology or whatever comes up, what does the word say? What does the word say? That has saved me from my, my thinking, keeping me up all night. Like, what? well, what about this? What about that? What, what does the word say? What does the word of God say? And there, that's where I build my foundation. That's where I build my life. Amen. John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Amen. And the word was God. And the word was God. And we know out of context that he's talking about Jesus. Oh, man, some people, y'all want to spend a whole lot of time with Jesus but got dust on your Bible. You say, I'm spending time with Jesus, but there's dust on these pages. Your pages are all crinkly stuck together because you haven't opened your Bible in a while. Get into the word of God. I'm not trying to beat anybody up. I'm really not. I'm really not. I I hope this is encouraging to you. But you got to get into your word. you got to get into your word. You've got to. If you get nothing else from today, don't just be, try to be led by the Holy Spirit. Get into the Word of God. Amen. Get into the Word of God. Amen? If you ignore His Word, you are actually ignoring God Himself. <laughs> if you ignore His Word, you are ignoring God Himself. Praise the Lord. I don't want to ignore God. This is where we find God's character and His, his integrity as well. This is what he talks about, thinks on, and acts on. This is what helps us, renewing our minds, transforming us into the image of God so that we can be living in acceptable sacrifices unto him. Transformed, amen, by his word. His word and his will are his counsel. So you don't need to go and ask for somebody else's opinion if you have God's word on it. Amen. Now, it's, it's good in, in multiple counsel, there is wisdom there. So I'm not saying, like, you should just... You, me, me and the word, that's it. I'm not listening to nobody else. That's not smart. That's not smart either. But Psalm chapter 119, verse 105 says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light into my path. A light to my feet and a, a lamp to my path. So the second thing that you need to know, number one, to be led by God is the word of God. How are we led by God? By his word. By his word. I could spend a long time talking about God's word. We're gonna move on. The second thing is by the Holy Spirit. So there's four things that you need to know about the Holy Spirit. And again, now I'm going to speed up. All right, y'all ready for this? Y'all ready? How many of you got your pens out? You're, you're ready to take some notes on this. This is important. You ready? The Holy Spirit. You need to know that, one, he's eternal. The Holy Spirit is eternal, meaning he has never started and he is never ending. He is eternal. Hebrews 19, 9, verse 13 and 14 says, For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of defiled persons with the ashes of a heifer sanctify for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the what? Eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So you see that the eternal spirit is the one who's living on the inside of you. Amen. So even in the beginning, if you go back to the book of Genesis, the Holy Spirit was hovering over the deep. He was there, and he's here now. Come on, he's seen it all, and he knows it all. Hallelujah. Come on, the same way that, uh, that he was hovering over the deep, he was ready for action there. He's hovering in you right now. He's ready for action right now. Amen. He's ready for action. The second thing that you need to know about the Holy Spirit, he is omniscient. What does that mean? That's a big word. It means he's no, he knows everything. He's all-knowing. 
First Corinthians chapter two, verse nine says, but as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear has heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. Verse 10 says, these things God has revealed to us through the spirit. For the spirit searches everything, even the depths of God, for who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person which is in him. So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except who? The spirit of God. How many believe that God is all knowing? This is, the scripture just says that the spirit of God knows God's every single thought. He is all knowing. And guess where he's at? In you. The Holy Spirit is in you, all knowing. That means that you, can, you, you know all things because you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Amen. But it's turning to the leading of the Holy Spirit to know when to say something, how to say something. Hallelujah. <laughs> the next thing, omnipotent, omnipotent, able to do anything. He is able to do anything. Luke chapter 1, verse 34 through 38. And Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born uh, will be called Holy, the Son of God. Hallelujah. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. Verse 37, for nothing will be impossible with God. Why is nothing impossible with God here? Come on, in the context, he said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and overshadow you with his power. Nothing is impossible with God with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Able to do anything. And Mary said, behold, I'm the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to what? Your word. Your word. Come on, we got to get a word from God, people. To understand the leading of the Holy Spirit, we have to know God's word, amen? And it's not a daunting task because the Holy Spirit, Jesus said the Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance everything that I've said to you. Everything that's in the word, he will bring it to your remembrance. So this does not mean that you have to spend two hours a day studying like you would study for a test for school or something, but as you meditate on the word of God and you chew on it, come on, it's gonna sink down into your heart. It'll stay there so that at the right time it's gonna come back up, ready, to be used, ready as action, amen? The last thing that you need to know about the Holy Spirit is that he is omnipresent. He's present everywhere. There's nowhere that he is not right now, amen? Psalm chapter 139, verse seven through 10, it says, where shall I go from your spirit? Rhetorical question, nowhere. <laughs> or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed and shield, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost most parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. Amen. So there's nowhere that you can flee from God's presence because the Holy Spirit is everywhere. Good news. <laughs> that is good news. Even Jonah couldn't run away from the call of God on his life. He had to get humble. <laughs> he had to humble himself and, and obey the word of the Lord. So there's nowhere that you can go that you cannot be led by God. Do you believe it this morning? So uh, back to, uh, as, I, as I close this morning, uh, back to uh, John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Actually, no, John chapter 16. Let's go to John chapter 16. I'm gonna read this this morning. Let's, we'll start in verse seven. John 16, verse seven. You all ready? This will be the last scripture this morning. Do I get anything? This has been a great service. I've had a ton of fun talking about, you know, throwing Gabby under the bus. That was a lot of fun. I'll pay for it later. <laughs> no, I'm joking. John chapter 16, verse 7. It says, but in fact, it's better for you that I go away. Because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. Let's, let's go ahead and read uh, verse 13 too. When the spirit of, the, of truth comes, that is the Holy Spirit, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will tell you what he has heard and he will tell you about the future. He will bring glory to me by telling you whatever he receives from me. So this morning with every head bowed and eyes closed, I wanna ask you a very specific question. Have you made Jesus the Lord of your life? For many of you, that the answer is yes. Jesus is the Lord of my life. For some of you, it's like, I don't really know. 
This morning, as we were talking about being led by the Spirit of God, there is no possible way for you to be led by God himself without Jesus. Without Jesus, there is no open door of opportunity for the Holy Spirit to come and dwell, make his home within you. The eternal spirit, the omniscient spirit, the omnipresent, the omnipotent spirit cannot make his home within you without Jesus. So this morning, I want, I want to ask two separate questions. Number one, it, I want to ask if you have never prayed a prayer that goes, Jesus, come into my heart, be the Lord of my life, remove the sins from me, and I want to make you the Lord of my life. If you've never prayed that prayer, or if you've never prayed a prayer of, or if you just want to pray a prayer of, I want to come back into communion with God. I want to confess Jesus as my Lord again. I recognize that I need to be led by the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit's power in my life. I need his, his, his capabilities in me. If, if, if that's you on any one of those, I want you to do something very bold and raise your hand. Raise your hand high this morning. If you want to receive Jesus for the first time or recommit your life to Jesus, if that's anybody this morning, well, praise the Lord. All right, well, praise the Lord. Let's do this, church. Y'all look at me. Let's pray together for those watching online. I feel like maybe there's somebody online that needs to receive Jesus. Can y'all pray with me this morning? Since we're all believers this morning, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for those watching online. Father, whether they're watching live right now or maybe on YouTube or podcast later. Lord, I just pray that, that your Holy Spirit is convicting them of their sin right now and turning them to the loving embrace of Jesus Christ, Lord, into your loving embrace, Father God. Lord, I just thank you that right now they're turning their life around by the power of the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit comes to make his dwelling place inside of them by the power and blood and sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And it's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Hey, did y'all get anything this morning? Praise the Lord. Hey, thank you so much for, for dealing with me this morning. Uh, y'all stand to your feet.